Good evening, dear students from all over Egypt. Welcome to today's session. With you today, Ms. Amani Shoukri Said Badawi, Garbiya Governorate, Ms. Samar Yahya, Suha Governorate, uh, sorry, Alexandria Governorate, and Ms. Safa Hassoub, Suha Governorate. Uh, hello and nice to have you today. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Ms. Samar and Ms. Amani aren't with us because um, due to some issues uh, re related to them. So, be with me and uh, today we are going to start Unit 11, Unit uh, Unit 12, sorry, the final of our curriculum. This is the end of our curriculum, Unit 12. What is the title of Unit 12, dear students? Do you remember? Yes, exactly. It's Miss and Fab. Miss and Fab. Well, let's uh, be together and know the meaning of the word Miss and fab. What are fab? What, what the meaning of them? Okay, so be with me and let's start. Can you see these photos? They are, okay, related to these two words. So be with me and let's check them together. First of all, the word look back. What does this, this word mean? Look back. Look back as a verb had two meanings. Well, the first one look at something behind you uh, you have something that's behind you or someone behind you we can say look back there is something or there is someone who's calling you okay uh, can you see here this example when i look back i can see where we went wrong well this is another meaning of the word look back look back means to think of the past okay to think about the events that happened to you so this example is related to this meaning, think of the past. So when I look back, when I think of my past with you or my past with you, I can see where we went wrong. I can see the problem that we went on. Okay, what about the word steady? Steady, okay. Uh, do you remember this? Um, set, steady, go. Okay, we can say it uh, in a race, in a competition and things like that. So. What does the word steady mean? Well, steady here is an adjective, okay? And it means fixed and not moving or changing. Something that's stable, okay? That's not moving or changing. Look to the example. Most rental price are steady this year. Well, there is no change or there are no change in the price this year. So it's steady, it's stable. Well, whenever we have someone who is really annoyed and angry of something, how can we describe him? We can say that he is fed up, fed up. So the word fed up is an adjective, dear students, and it means very annoyed, bored, or disappointed from anything, from a subject, a problem, or whatever. Okay, so whenever you are very annoyed and have troubles and disappointed as someone asking you well talk to me or cheer up or something like that you can say oh i'm sorry i am fed up with my job i am fed up so i am fed up i'm annoyed i'm frustrated and disappointed well what about this word tear tear well the word tear has plenty of meaning dear students as a verb and as a noun. Look here, one of its meaning, okay, to cut into pieces. Tear means to cut things, okay, to tear it apart. It means to cut it into uh, three or four pieces as you wish, okay. Uh, a couple of pages have been torn from the book. So turn means here that you uh, cut them from the book to make anything else. Okay, and another meaning of the word tear, move very quickly. So to tear means to move very quickly. Look here. He went tearing along the road after the bus. So he went tearing, it means that he moved uh, quickly. Uh, he moved fast. So this is the word tear as a verb or as a noun. Well, if we have plenty of water that's covering the whole town or the the whole place how can we describe it well we can say flood flood so
So the word flood here is a verb and it means to be covered with water. To be covered with water. Whatever the place or the thing that is covered with water, we can say it's flood. It's flood. Okay? And has another meaning. It means fill in large numbers. So if you are going to fill in uh, plenty of numbers, you can say I'm flooding it. Okay? Let's uh, see or check it according to our example. The whole town flood when the river burst it, uh, its tanks. So whenever the river, okay, um, flood or burst, the whole town was, uh, what, was what? Was flood, okay? Full of water. And donations are flooding into the charity organization. Uh, here are so perfect words, okay? To know the difference between them. We have the word mess, legend, fable, um, well, uh, these are uh, another thing. Well, we have myth, legend, fable, and we can add fairy tale. You know fairy tale? Well, what's the difference between the four words? Myth, legend, fable, and fairy tale. Well, the word myth, dear students, okay, it's an ancient untrue story so myth myth is untrue it's not related to reality at all okay it's all imagination fancy something that's not real at all okay Tol tell telling you uh, literally to explain things that happened in the past so whenever we have something that's untrue imaginary uh, related to the past we can say myth myth okay uh, look here children enjoy stories about the gods of greek and roman myth so they are untrue they are not real that's why we call them myth well what about the word legend legend well legend dear students is an old old story but maybe true maybe well it has some some facts or it may be, maybe happened, okay, but we don't know. So, legend, legend is maybe true, but myth, it's never true, okay? It's unreal, unreal or untrue. Well, um, so it's an old and maybe true story about people or events. Look here, most people like the legend of Hercules, and I guess all of us know the story or the legend of Hercules. By the way, the word legend, we can describe um, heroes who did very big work as legend, like Muhammad Salah, like um, Dr. Majdi Yaqub. We can say about them they are legends because they did great work in their field. So the word legend is an old and maybe true story about things that happened in the past. Or we can describe the deeds of people who did great work, okay, uh, or the or the well known uh, or the famous people who did great work. What about the word fable? Fable. Well, fable here is a noun, and it's a short story and literature that tells you a general truth. Well, fable, fable, okay, it tells you a truth, general truth about life, about uh, creatures, about uh, plants, uh, novels, and, and so on. So this is fab. It's a short story that's written uh, for, uh, for children or for teenagers to tell them about any, any truth in life. Look here. She read the fable of the tortoise and the hare. So this is a story that she likes. Well, what about fairy tales? This is the fourth word, fairy tale. A fairy tale is a short story that's related to animals, uh, plants, they, they, they talk or walk or act like humans, okay? And fairy tales are specifically for children, for children. Uh, like the, any, any fairy tale you know about, um, about uh, talking, uh, about Jack and the Beans, if you, if you remember them, okay? So these are stories or um, 
very very short stories that made four children about talking and walking and acting animals and plants this is fairy tale so these are the difference between myth legend fable and fairy tale well we have here a new verb for you it's stretch out so to stretch out it means to extend your arms and legs um, do you know when you are about to sleep, but you don't want to sleep, you want to study. So you stretch your arms and your legs. So to stretch out, it means to extend them, to widen your arms and your legs in order not to sleep or maybe as a practice, for, for example. I just want to get home and stretch out on the sofa. Uh, what about the word cheer? Cheer. Well, uh, do you remember whenever you drink uh, cola or drink whatever? So they say cheer up, cheer up. So what's the meaning of cheer? Cheer. It's a verb and it means to give a shout of encouragement. So you are encouraging someone to cheer him, okay? Or to be happy, to feel happy. Cheer up means be happy, feel happy, act happy. And it has another meaning, okay? It's a cheer uh, to, to, to encourage someone to do something. And it's related mostly to the, um, to the foreign uh, England, America, and so on. They have uh, a cheer, a cheer team, okay? I don't know if you can remember them or something like that. Okay, let's have a look at the example. Everyone cheered at the winners received their medal. So they were really happy. They encouraged them and shouted out of joy or out of happiness. And now it's your turn. And unfortunately, we are not. Uh, we don't have Miss Amani or Miss Summer to check your answers. So be with me and try to give me the correct answers. Uh, I'll give you five seconds to know the correct answer. Well, we have Romy. Romy's face when he heard that he got the full mark. Well, he got the full mark, inshallah, all of you get the full mark in English. So, did he, Rami, shot, flood, look back, or cheered? Well, the correct answer should be, of course, cheered. So, he cried out of joy. Well, number two, Messi, Ronaldo, and Mohamed Salah are eternal football, football what? Charities, myth, legends, or tears? Five seconds. Of course, they are our legends and God made them for us. Well, number three, my little sister likes the, of the liar shepherd. So this is a story for kids. Uh, what is it? Is it a myth, fable, legend, or relevance? Of course, uh, it's not something that's uh, very old or happened uh, in the old ages and not real. Uh, it's not something that may be real, okay? It's, uh, we can, well, a liar shepherd, shepherd here it means peasant or a farmer. So it, uh, it may be telling some truth or something like that. So it's a story, short story for kids. Well, which one is a short story here? Well, it's a fable, of course. Perfect, and thank you for all who gave us the correct answer. Well, let's continue together. Uh, here we are going to continue the definitions of Unit 11 together. Uh, sorry, we, unit 12. I don't know where, why uh, unit 11 is uh, stuck in my, into my mind. Well, unit 12, uh, challenge. To challenge or to be in a challenge. It's a verb and it's a noun. The word challenge as a verb or as a noun. Well, as a verb, it means to invite someone to compete or to compete someone and try to beat him. This is to challenge someone. Okay, to dare him uh, whether he will win or you win. So this is two challenge. 
And then out of it is the challenge itself that you did with him. Well, I challenged him in a challenge. Okay, تحدي. Look here, she had challenged me to a computer game. Or I competed her in the challenge. So it's either to be verb or as a noun. Well, what about the word post? To post about something, it's a verb. It means to speak too proudly, to be proud of something, okay? To speak um, well uh, in pride about your achievement. Look here. They posted that they had never lost a single game. And the word post, we took it plenty of times in our novel, Great Expectation. Okay? Do you remember who was posting about uh, his maid and uh, his, uh, his money, his wealth? Do you remember this character? Write me in the chat box, please. Well, the word shop, shop, okay. So the word shop here is to cut things into pieces like tomato, like potato, a watermelon and some, something like that. Okay, to chop it, to chop it, okay, it means to cut it into pieces. Um, uh, look here to the, our example. He was chopping uh, wood in the yard. So he was chopping wood in the yard. Uh, the word night, night. Well, it's an elegant and wonderful word. I want all of you to know this word. The word night, the K is silent. A man giving a rank of honor by a king. He is a delicate and an honorable man. Okay, that he was giving the rank of a knight, not in Egypt, but in Britain, okay, in the United Kingdom. So a knight is a man giving a rank of honor by a king. He was one of the knights in black armor. And we have plenty of movies that have the uh, word knight in, in it. Uh, of course, a knight holds what in his arm? Holds what? Does he hold a knife, a gun? No, he is holding a sword, a sword. So the word sword here is a weapon with a long metal or a long blade. Here is the sword, this is a sword, okay? Uh, look to our example, the pen is mightier than the sword. And this is a wonderful idiom for you, dear student. A wise saying, so this is an idiom or a wise saying for you, the pen, pen, okay, is mightier than the sword. It means, it means a word that is spoken, it can change the whole world, okay? Larger and mightier than to change the whole universe by killing people, okay? So killing isn't worth it, but writing to people is uh, a very mighty uh, weapon to use. Well, um, a knight that's using a sword, so we can describe him as brave. Brave, it means courage, showing no fear. He has no fear at all. So he is a courageous man. It means brave. Look here to our example. He was very brave to learn to sky at 50. To ski, sorry, to ski at 50. Well, we are continuing the definition, dear students, together. These are the um, definitions and vocabulary of Unit 12. And after that, inshallah, in the next session, we will take the grammar and the uh, novel. Well, we are going to continue. Generous. To be generous. What does it mean to be generous? It means willing to give money and help others out of kind kindness. Okay, so to be kind to other people, it means to give them, give them money, give them even to be generous by your smile, by your laugh. Okay, it was generous of you to lend me the money or give me something. And of course, the noun of it is generosity, generosity. Okay, so what is the word honorable? Honorable, to be honorable comes from the word honor, honor, okay? To act decently, to do nothing bad, and not to harm other people. This is how to be honorable. 
this is an adjective and it means honest or fair fair okay to be just to other people he was horrible and returned the wallet he didn't steal it okay uh, he was an honest man of course if you are horrible or an honest person maybe maybe you are humble humble so the word humble is an adjective and it means not proud not posting okay maybe some maybe so, sometimes we can call uh, a poor man humble man okay sometimes we can call an ordinary man as a humble man so the word humble means a lot of meaning or has a lot of meaning like uh, not proud not posting maybe mean poor or ordinary let's have a look here he's very humble about his success it means that he's not proud about it he's not posting about it okay even when she became rich she never forget her humble background so humble here means poor background she was poor but after she became rich well she never forget her humble background at the time he was just a humble mechanic so humble here means ordinary man he's a regular person an ordinary man okay well what about the word polite well we have plenty of wonderful adjectives here generous honorable humble and polite so polite means behaving in a way that is so, uh, socially correct to behave in a social um, uh, in a socially accepted uh, behavior to act politely so to be polite okay to act in a good way to be polite to be kind uh, to be generous to be honest and things like that she was too polite to point out my mistakes okay let's continue and it's your turn be with me and give me your answers please number one despite his wealth and social pos uh, position Mr. Smith is very, what do you think? So he is very rich man and he is in a high rank or a high social position, but he is very humble, generous, eternal or fed up. What do you think, dear students? Of course, he is very humble. He is a modest man. Well, number two, he divorced his wife in a face of anger yes we are going to take this idiom and it's pretty important for you in a in a what of anger in a myth armor fit legend it's fit and it's a verbal collocation by the way fit of anger fit of anger it means a moment of anger okay when he is very angry about something you know, so this is the fit of anger. So he divorced his wife in a fit of anger. Well, let's have a look at number three. Arab space were known by their bravery, honor, and skill. So Arab what? Arab Harris, virgins, whales, or wild, or nice. What do you think? Of course, Arabs are full of nice. Nice, they are very brave people. Well, let's continue together, dear students. Uh, yes, we are going to continue the definition together. Well, we have the word to uh, to exist. Well, exist here is a verb. Okay, the verb, and it means to be real, to be there. Okay, I can find you or I can find this thing. So this is to exist. I don't think ghosts exist. So exist here, it means real or something that I can see, I can touch, I can feel. Well, what about the word armor? Armor, this is a noun and it's strong protective covering. Uh, this is something that you can cover yourself with to protect you. So this is an armor. Okay, uh, look here. Police put on body arm before uh, confronting the uh, roaders. So uh, armor here means 
a cover that they cover their body to protect them from guns, from uh, pallets, and so on. Okay? Like a shield. Like a shield, if you know the word shield. Well, what about this? Chivalry. Chivalry. Well, this is a noun. It means very polite, to be very polite about something, uh, to be honest and fair behavior. Look here to the example. We read stories of the past to know about the age of chivalry. Okay. What about the word eternal? Eternal. Uh, you know, when um, in movies and, uh, and stories that they say uh, love forever or we will be together forever. So this is eternal, eternal. So eternal is an adjective and it means lasting forever. Uh, whatever it's friendships, love, of, um, uh, it's any relation between uh, two people, they wish to uh, or they wish it to last forever. To be eternal okay uh, look here to our example well will you two never stop your eternal arguing uh here it means it means okay eternal here that's lasting forever you are arguing all the time well will you two never stop your eternal arguing so this is the word eternal well whatever anything that lives uh, above our land or that God created, we can call it creature, creature. So anything that Allah created, we can call it creature, okay? Any living thing, any living, living by the way, living thing, uh, like animals, fish, people, uh, pears, and so on. Look here, rainforests are filled with amazing creatures that we, we, we maybe don't know plenty of them, okay? And the word creatures can be um, uh, called, okay, about um, other other creatures in, in the past, like dinosaurs, like, um, like myth, mythology and things like that. We can call them creatures, that they are, are real uh, or not, not true. Uh, the word reflect reflect well it's a verb and it has two meanings to reflect it means to send the light okay to send the light to other people or other things like like okay uh, the sun reflects the light of uh, sorry the moon reflects the sun of uh, the, the light of the, the sun the moon okay it's not shining by itself no it takes the light of the sun and reflects it to us. So this is to send the light. And of, uh, the word reflect also means to show, to show something or show emotion or, or show behavior to other people. Look here. He saw his reflection in the water. So reflection here is his, his shape, okay, uh, in the water, uh, in a mirror, by the way. The statistic reflects a change in people's spending habits. So here, statistic uh, uh, reflects here. It means that show us, it gives us information. It tells us information about the change in people's, uh, people's spending habits. Well, what about the word pounce? Okay, to pounce, it's a verb and it's not a bonus. No, not, not bonus, it's pounce. Well, the word bounce, it's a verb and it means to move up and down after hitting a surface, a surface. So uh, after hitting any surface, sometimes the ball, okay, move up and down. So it's bounce, bounce. Look here, she bounced the ball quickly. She bounced the ball quickly. Uh, debatable, debatable here means not clear. To describe anything about debatable, it means it's not clear to me. The value of some of the experiments is debatable. So debatable here means it's not not uh, not clear or um, doubtable or I, I need clarification. Okay. Well, the word ambulance ambulance it's related to hospitals, doctors, nurses, and so on. Okay. So the word ambulance 
it's a vehicle or it's a car, a big car, okay, to take patients to hospitals. And of course, it has a bed that's made specifically for patients, ha has some mm, medical instruments that a doctor or a nurse that may use to help the patient till they get to the hospital. Okay, so during the road, they can give them um, uh, any any medical instrument, any medical treatment till they get to the hospital. Okay, well, do it with us, dear students. It's your turn now. The ball face off the goal post and into the net. So the ball, the ball, the ball what? Related, bounced, represented or deserved. I think you know the meaning now, okay? Of course the ball bounced, bounced off. It means moved up and down. Okay, well, number two, when you are in favor of an idea, ah, yes, look here, favor of an idea. This is very important for you and memorize it, please. Favor of an idea, it means I am with this idea. I support it. I am with you. I agree to this idea. So in favor of an idea, it means I, huh, you, you what, you, of course, you support this idea okay so it's a pretty important for you to remember it uh, well number three don't face this dog it's very aggressive so don't what don't intend don't approach don't relate don't bounce what do you think well of course don't touch or don't come near this dog so to come near someone it means to approach okay so don't approach this dog it's very aggressive it may bite you well done to all of you who gave me the correct answer well let's continue yes we have the word sorry okay yes we have the word code code uh, code has a lot of meaning, dear students. Well, one of these meanings, a system of words or letters to express a message secretly, secretly. You know, when you have a secret language between you and your friend, and only two of you know this code, so we can call this a code, okay? A, a secret language between both of you. Uh, uh, or a set of rules accepted as a principle. So a code, maybe it's a secret language between you and your friend or you and your family, like the Nubian people. The Nubian people had their language and used it in um, uh, October War, uh, Harb October. They used the Nubian words or the Nubian language as a secret code, okay, to deliver the uh, the um, the orders of their commands and it can have another meaning uh, it can has another meaning a set of rules accepted as principles look to the examples they may give us a clear meaning inshallah the message was written in a code or in code because we can't understand it. we don't know it only only you can know the secret code to uh, this message. Well, officers and soldiers follow a specific code in the army, so they follow specific principles or rules. What about the, the word pass on? Pass on. Okay, pass on, it means to convey from a generation to another generation, to deliver the information or deliver the civilization, okay, the, the knowledge, from one generation to other person or to other generation. Look here, myths were passed on, passed on, okay, to us from our ancestors. So to pass on means to deliver it or to give it uh, from others to uh, uh, other people. What about the word methodology? Methodology, well, methodology comes from the word myth, myth, as we told you. So methodology is the science of uh, studying myth. 
myth in general or popular belief usually untrue. So it's usually untrue, as I told you. Look here. She is fascinating by the ancient story of classical mythology. The story of King Arthur is a piece of mythology. It's not true, unfortunately. Well, we have here outdated or old fashioned. Outdated, finished, uh, old fashioned, um, not updated, and so on. We can call this very old. So if we have something that's very old, you can say it's outdated. It's outdated, okay, or old fashioned. Uh, we can call uh, her ideas, by the way, someone's ideas that it's outdated or old fashioned. Uh, her dress is expensive, but it's old fashioned. It's not modern. It's not updated. OK. Uh, now this is uh, we are talking here in the language notes, by the way. So these are very important for you. Well, we have the word here tear tear. OK. Here, uh, we gave you other meaning of the word tear. Tear to cut things into pieces, okay? But here, the word tear as a noun, it means a salty drop that comes from your eyes when you cry. So, a tear or tear, the, the drop of water that comes from your eyes when you, when you cry, okay? So, these are tears, du moi. I won't shed any tears when he goes. I'm not going to cry over him. Well, shower somebody with something. Well, this is a verbal collocation or an idiom that's pretty important for you, dear students. To shower somebody with something. Uh, shower, shower her with thanks, shower her with love. Uh, shower any anyone with anything. With anything, it means to give him a lot of this. When I say that I uh, shower Miss Amani with thanks, it means that I gave her a lot of thanks. I thank her a lot. Okay, so this is shower somebody with something. She was showered with presents. She, she was showered by presents. It means that gave her, they gave her a lot of presents. Okay. In her birthday, we want to shower the market with our local products. So it means we are going to uh, uh, give them plenty of our products. Okay, a lot of our products. So to shower something or somebody with something. Loudly and aloud. Loudly and aloud. Both of them are adverbs. Both of them are adverbs. But the word loudly, it means making a lot of noise, okay? Making very, very, you know, a very loud noise that you want them to keep quiet or be calm a little bit. So they spoke very loudly. They spoke very loudly. Well, it's, it's something that's um, not relieving, not comforting to others to do. What about the word aloud, aloud? Well, it's an adverb, but it means loud enough to be heard, that I can accept it. So the difference between loudly and aloud, loudly is not comforting to other people. It's very, very loud that I can't stand it. Okay, but aloud, it's a loud voice that we can hear, okay, and it's uh, convenient or it's comfort uh, comforting for me to hear it, okay? That you can hear me without feeling annoyed. This is the word aloud, aloud, okay? So loud enough to be heard. Uh, he read or he reads her letter aloud to the rest of the family so they can hear him. Uh, in a fit of anger, as I told you, in a fit of anger, doing something while angry, while you are very angry, as I told you, okay? He slapped his friend in a fit of anger. And please, please, dear students, don't act while you are in a fit of anger because you are going to regret it later. 
Continue with the language note, dear students. Well, we have here at a slow space. At a slow space, it means to do these things slowly, slowly a little bit, okay? Public awareness developed at a low space. So at a low or a slow space means very slowly or very um, in a slow way, okay? Be based in and be based on. What's the difference between them? Be based in, it means located. This place is in, in other uh, country or in a place. So it means it's a place is in, 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 in any area or located in this area. This is be based in. Be based in means located. The head office is based in Smuha. So based in here means it, it's located. The place of it is in Smuha. But be based on, it means the piece of this is something. So be based on to be the main idea of something. Look here, the film was based on. So based on means, okay, uh, it was built on something or uh, they, they took um, the idea from another thing, okay? They got the main idea of something according to it. So be based on ala assess, okay? A novel by Charles Dickens. The film was based on a novel by Charles Dickens. They took the main idea of it. From now on. From now on means from this moment, I'm going to act uh, in, in any way. So if you are angry with someone, you can say, well, from now on, I'm not going to talk to you. Or from now on, I'm going to study. I'm going to change myself. So the word from now on, it means from this moment till the future. I'm going to start from now. Look here. From now on, I will give the orders. No one will give me the orders anymore. Okay. Well, what about the word shopper? Shopper. It's a noun and it's a particular way to do something. Poachers use heavy shoppers to cut the meat. So shoppers, it's, uh, uh, it's a particular way to cut things. It's your turn now, now my dear friends or my dear students. Uh, do it with us. Five seconds and know your answers. Everybody sees the situation through their own, own moral perspective, conclusion or creature one or everybody sees the situation through their own of course perspective from their point of view number two the child stays on the soapy floor we have a soapy floor so the child stretched slept deserved or reflected what do you think? Of course, it's not stretched. No, 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 no. He, he uh, slept, okay? Uh, slept on the soapy, soapy uh, floor. And by the way, stretch can be, can be true, by the way. Uh, slept here means uh, he slid or uh, in zalak, okay? He slept on the soapy floor. And the word stretch, stretch means that he uh, extended his arms and his legs due to uh, that um, he fell down the, the, the place or he fell on the floor. But uh, the word deserve and reflected is not correct. It's not correct at all. Well, number three. Space means connected with what's happening uh, or being discussed. What do you think? If we have something that's connected with what's happening, is it relevant, universal, entertaining, or boring? Of course, it's relevant. Of course, it's relevant. Okay? 
So relevant means connected with something that's happening or being discussed. And as I told you, the child maybe slept on the sofa floor or he stretched on the sofa floor. They both can be correct. Well, let's continue. I guess, uh, yes, we have another uh, language notes here. Yes, the words sink and drown. Well, it's pretty old for you and you already know them. OK, you took them before plenty of time. Sink and drown. What the word sink and drown? Well, sink, go down under the surface of a liquid. And it's four things. Four things like um, like ships, uh, metals and things like that. But drown, OK, to, to drown, it's for people to go underwater and die, but for people. Um, look here, the Titanic sank in 1912. In 1912. Drowned to die for human, for people, as I told you, by being unable to breathe underwater. He drowned in a boating, ac uh, in a boating accident. Well, what about the word crew? Crew is a group of people who work on a ship or a plane. OK, so they work in the surface of a ship or a plane. We can call them crew, crew. Uh, he's one of the ambulance crew. And the word cost, cost here is means a group of actor in a film or a play. So we have <clears throat> we have crew and we have cost. A crew, they are in a, an ambulance, a ship, a plane, something that you can walk through it or walk, um, OK, walk uh, in between it. But cost, cost, they are a group of people who's acting in a film or a play. So whenever we have a group of people that they are acting, we can call cost, the cost of people. OK, uh, look here after the final performance, the director rewarded the cost. And we have here the word staff. Staff, we can call, so we have three words to differentiate. Crew, cost, and staff. Well, the word staff is a group of people who work for an organization, like education, for, uh, for, for example. Well, me, Ms. Summer, Ms. Amani, we are a staff. Not cost, not crew. We are a staff that we are working in an organization or a company or something like that, OK? Uh, so there is a good relationship between the pupils and the staff. We have here lie, lie and lay. What is the difference between three of them? And concentrate before Azan Elisha. Well, we have here lie, it's a verb, and um, the, 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 the past tense of it is lay, and the, the past participle is lane. So lie, lay, lane, to be in a horizontal position, to be in a horizontal position. The cat likes to uh, lie in front of the fire to get warm, OK? Uh, lie as a verb, and the, the past of it is lied, and the past participle is lied. It means to speak falsely, to tell untruly things, OK? To lie to other people. So don't trust her, she's lying. She's not telling the truth, okay? Uh, what about the word lay, lay, okay? And remember, we have here lay, this is a past of lie, and the word lay, it's a verb, and the, the past of it is laid, the past participle is laid. To put down or produce it. So to put down things, it means to lay it down or maybe sometimes lay the foundation of something, an institution or an idea, OK? Or to produce egg. Look here. She laid the baby on the bed and thousands of turtles drag themselves onto the beach to lay egg, OK? Do we have any time? OK, dear students, uh, don't forget, please, to uh, this uh, antenna and antenna, but uh, unfortunately we don't have any time for you. Inshallah, next uh, session we will explain an opinion essay. 
we will explain to you the opinion is say because it's pretty important uh, for you to study. Next session, uh, wait for us, inshallah, on Sunday. And uh, nice to have you, my dear students. See you, inshallah, next week. Goodbye.